Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is Advent. Praise God. The first day of Advent. Advent. And I'm excited, church. Are you excited? I know we should always be excited, but there's something special about this time, right? Unless you come from a warm weather climate where it doesn't snow and it doesn't get cold. Then you have Advent light, if that's, if that's the case. So all my brothers and sisters in Florida, places like that, I'm sorry. Say it. That's right, it's real. <laughs> hey, I, I appreciate the honor I of that. All right. I might have to revise my view. <laughs> So yes, today starts Advent, a time when we look back at Jesus' first coming, and we celebrate that, and we also look forward to his second coming with eager anticipation. Advent has four themes, hope, peace, joy, and love, and we're going to explore all four of those. We're going to begin a series today that says, He Gives Us Better, an Advent message in the words of Jesus. So we're going to talk about those four themes, and we're going to kick it all off with a quote from Jesus that speaks to each one of those themes. And I pray that at the end of this, you fall a little bit deeper in love with Jesus. I pray that you see him a little bit more clearly, see how much greater he is. And if we could do that every year, church, wouldn't we be blessed? If every year we love Jesus a little bit more, a little bit deeper, a little bit better. We will be blessed for that. Amen? Amen? Amen. So today, like I said, we're going to be looking at hope. Hope. And there's a, a passage that doesn't contain the word hope, but in my opinion is one of the most hopeful messages that Jesus ever gave. It's found in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. John 14, verses 1 through 3. And here Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. What does that passage make you feel? I know it's hope, so don't say hope. <laughs> but besides that, what do you see here? What does it make you feel? Loved by God. Loved by God, yes. But there's room for everyone. Everyone. All, short, whatever. That's right, no one's excluded. Amen. What else do you see there? What else does it make you feel? Yes. Amen. Comfort. Comfort. Go ahead, Eric. Uh, the word prepare is that it's not just like sort of being thrown into place. Like, he knew how this was going to go all along. Amen. Amen. Prepare. What else do you see there? What else jumps out at you? Uh, wanted. Wanted. Yes. Yeah. Like, it, like, he wouldn't go through that trouble if he just wanted to cast you aside. He, he wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. I almost missed it. He will be back. He will be back. I will come back. Not maybe, not if I get around to it, if I find the time. I am coming back for you, I promise. What else do you see? This is good. That was, that was the sermon right there. I'm going to sit down now. <laughs> because the, the fact that Jesus wants you should change your life. The fact that he desires to be with you makes all the difference. And the fact that he's coming back for you gives us hope. Amen. Now, hope is different than a wish. Right? I, I can say I wish I win a million dollars. But that's not grounded in anything. I'm just making that up. That's something that I think that I want. Hope is grounded in a real person, a relationship. When we hope, we're trusting in something rock solid. That's why 1 Corinthians 13 says only three things will remain when you pass from this life to the next. There's only three things you can take with you, and those things are faith, hope, and love. Because faith, hope is rock solid. Jesus says, I will come back. So we have hope 
for a better future. That our eternity is bright. So this hope is not a wishy-washy word, church. This hope is real. More solid than anything in this world. And what would a prepared place, I'd like you everyone to just close your eyes for just a second. And think about a prepared place for you. Think about the perfect place with the furniture you like, with the colors that you like. Them. Think about the smells that would be there. If there are people there, who would be there? Are you in your place, church? Have you found your place? There's nothing there that doesn't belong. Nothing out of place. What does that place feel like to you? Paradise. Paradise. Right? Awesome. Yes. And I can see you all just kind of calm down as you went to that place. <laughs> <laughs> I saw all the shoulders sort of drop. <laughs> it's amazing. Now, now picture that Jesus, who knows you better than you know yourself, is going to prepare a place for you. Church, that place is going to be better than home. There, there's not going to be anything like it. There's no feeling where you're going to be feel. You're not going to ever feel so known, so welcome, so treasured in all your days than when you're in that prepared place by Jesus. And what I really want you to understand is that when Jesus came to earth, the, the incarnation, right? He had certain things that he had to do. He had a to-do list. He's like, all right, die for all humanity. Okay, check. Live for a while, teach and preach. Okay, got to do that, got to do that. All right. Right, raise up some disciples so they can start this thing called a church. Get a church going. We'll do that. Right? But what we're going to explore in this series is that these things that Jesus did and that he said, he didn't have to do church. Do you understand? He's God. Does he himself personally have to prepare a place? Doesn't he have some angels or other beings that could do that for him? Sure. But he doesn't do that. You see, hope is not just something that he talks about or we talk about. He is hope. He is hope. And anything worth hoping for flows from him. He is our hope. And, and how did Jesus learn this hope? How, how did he get to this place? Let's look at another passage that talks about when Jesus arrived on earth. We're going to look at Luke chapter 6. I mean, Luke chapter 2, sorry. Verses 6 and 7. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. Who's the they here, church? Jesus. Uh, they, they, Mary and Joseph. There, right? This is he's coming. He's coming. He's in there too, but you know. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. When Jesus came into this world, was anyone there to greet him? Was there any prepared place? No. Was there anyone seeking after him and looking for him? And, and Well, not in a good way. We'll talk about that next week. There was no prepared place for him. And when you're looking at the incarnation, if you look at Jesus' entry into this world, it doesn't look good, church. This is how we treat our creator, our God. You got to understand, church, that Jesus was 100% God and 100% human. What do you think a beginning like this does to a child? That there is no one to welcome you, that you were hunted, you have to flee for your life. That people died in search of you. 
What does that do to a person? What does that do to their psyche? A lot of negative things, but one thing it doesn't do, it doesn't make you feel helpful. It doesn't make you say, yippee, I'm going to have a bright future. But Jesus isn't like that, is he? You see, deep down inside, he is the wellspring of hope, church. Do you understand that? And even though we had gave him no reason to hope, he didn't learn hope from us, that's for sure. Even where he lived, can any prophet come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? You see, he was like so many young people in our communities that our society has neglected and forgotten about. He was like so many young people who are told that you're never going to pout to anything just by the nature of where you grew up and how you look and what color you are. He was one of them. Written off by society. Overlooked. And why do I say this, church? Because the fact that he gave you his hope is astonishing. Because what did we give him, church? What do we give him? But this Jesus is not like us, is he? He is, but he isn't. You see, he has the storehouse of hope. He knows where it is. It's in him. And even though he led a hopeless life, he said, I'm not going to let you stay like this. I'm going to give you hope. I'm going to let you know that in my father's house are many rooms. And I'm going to go and prepare a room for you so that when you come into my world, when you enter into my reality, you'll be completely taken care of. Not a care in the world. This season calls our attention to some of the most important things we should be thinking about. And the fact that Jesus gave us better than he got should be a big theme over the next four weeks. He gives us better. He doesn't just return what we give him. He gives us better. He gives us the best possible gifts. That's why he deserves to be glorified and praised and worshipped. Because he, he did not look at his own situation and circumstance and start there. He just said, I'll come, I've come to do the will of the Father. And he sent me to save that which was lost. Glory to the living God, church. And that hope, that hope is there for you. So whatever your circumstance is, whatever you're going through, whatever hard time you find yourself in, whatever the enemy is saying to you right now, you've got to understand that there's a hope that is beyond this earth that's been given to you. He will come for you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for this hope. This hope that is beyond what we can even understand. This hope that did not originate in this world, Lord God, but comes from the storehouse of hope in Christ. Thank you so much that you did not return to us what we gave to you, Lord God. You gave us so much better. You gave us so much beyond what we could even imagine, Lord. And that hope remains for us. You haven't taken that gift away, Lord God, and we can trust and rely in this rock-solid hope, Lord, that we will one day see you and you will bring us to that place you prepared for us. We thank you and give you glory, Lord, in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.